Welcome to day two of Major League Gaming's Winter Championships. I'm Gandhi alongside with Walshie. And now, Walsh, there's been some questions. We've been getting a lot of tweets as to the split screen on main stage. So just go ahead and fill us in, please. All right, so split screen on main stage. Obviously, these guys have to go through split screen all the way up until round four, I believe. Yep. And it'd be unfair for these guys on main stage to go to full screen for this round. And also, it'd be not very beneficial because they're going to have to go back to split screen once they're off yep. the main stage in those following rounds. So for a couple different reasons, they're staying in split screen, even though we're not using all the screens on main stage. We're all about fairness and the highest level of competition here at Major League Gaming, and that's what we bring to you. And we but also bring some false tweets from myself. I said that we were <laughs> going to have Ambush and Severance, and from what I understand, they are going to be playing on one of the side stations, unfortunately. That would have been the better match to throw up there, and sorry for the miscommunication, but we will strive to make the best matches on main stage. All right, well, on the main stage, we have Status Quo taking on Authority. Uh, could I get a little noise for this uh, winner's bracket round two matchup? A lot of noise. Maybe in Walshie chant. I don't know. Whatever you want to do. <laughs> All right. Well, we are jumping into Team Slayer on Zealot. First to 50 kills. We have the sniper rifle, top gold, the grenade launcher at the tubes. And uh, pretty much, Dave, uh, what's the strat here? What are we looking to do? Um, once again, similar to Zealot flag, you want to be holding top gold. You want to control a sniper. But once again, you can also get away with going top hollows on this. You are not restricted to top gold in this game type. So you're almost going to see some standoffs. When a team controls top gold, they're not going to force taking it over. They're going to take their time, get a grenade launcher. And also, you'll see teams press out of gold when they do have it, because all matters in this game type is kills and positioning. Well, we have the sniper air rifle in the hands of Enable. He is already putting it to use. And Dave, you actually got a chance to watch that as well at the three-team land uh, this last weekend. And they were looking pretty damn good. Yes, they started off a little weak, um, getting dominated by Instinct. You know, if I, if I had to estimate, like, let's say a series was 4-1 Instinct's favor. And towards the end of the land, they were they were splitting series with them. They were beating Instinct 4-1, 3-2, and they lost on the final tournament day of the land. But they just proved that in that short while, they improved so much. And one thing I want to point out that both this team and Straight Rip and I have known during these split screen rounds is they split up the players in a different order than I would expect. I would have expected Enable and Flamestar to be on the same screen since they've teamed together longer, and you know Royal 2 and Snakebite since they've teamed together longer. And same with Straight Ribbon. I was expecting play, uh, Mick Win and Ninja, and it almost seems like they're splitting up their veteran and their younger players. now. You do get some criticism of this in the booth where we'll be like, oh, there's not too much difference, like veterans, rookies, yeah. these are just titles, but there really is a difference. You talk about players that have had 10 times as much term experience, like you talk about T squared, he's been to probably 30 tournaments, Ninja and Mikwin, probably what, like five or so yeah. apiece? So my math is definitely off with 10 times, but <laughs> you get what I'm getting at. Like these players obviously have experience that these that can help these younger players. And maybe they're trying to divide it up. And like I said, when I was talking to Strong Side, he was saying that him and T Squared was trying to like mold Ninja and Mikwin into shape. They have the skill, the talent, and that's why I almost see them doing here with Royals and Snake Bite, because those guys have proved themselves to be top players. Yeah, now uh, also to keep in mind, as Flamesword's gonna uh, get How does Genius do it? How does he know what screen is the action's gonna happen on? He, he, he's he just a, nods he, at me, and it makes me mad. I want that skill. He, he, he's been <laughs> abused by Puckett for so long. <laughs> uh, but nonetheless here, so in case you are unfamiliar with what happened in the off-season transaction with this status quo squad, 14 days before the event, Flamesword and Enable parted ways from the Elam brothers, and they decided to pick up Frenzy from Flamesword. <laughs> they decided to pick up Snakebite and Royal 2, who are rising stars in this community. They got second at the 2011 National Championship, and they looked incredibly dominant. Flamesword, the veteran, the team captain here, who was eliminated in round two of the free for all. I talked to him, and he said. You know, I was just trying to uh, light a fire under their butt. That's all. <laughs> I lost on purpose. I, I said, would, well, you know. I like his style because anytime I messed up, I was, was right on spot with excuses. I was like, oh, you know what? It's for their benefit, you yeah. know? I was trying to help them. I was being selfless by losing in round two. <laughs> so I got to respect his excuses. That's a pretty good one. Well, it is just complete domination here. 
flawless team shooting here. Flame Sword and Snake Fight, and the entire guys on the Status Quo Squad working hand in hand, just doing an excellent job of just locating this Authority Squad and just keeping the pressure on them. And that is something that we have to talk about. They have sustained this pace of the game, and there's nothing Authority can do. No, I mean, it's nearly impossible to come back, you know, on a 30 to 4 run at this point in the game. But it goes to show, like you said, we've had many events prior to this where we have the pro bracket, the end bracket, and a lot of people are like, all right, do these pros deserve to be there? And these guys are playing against these, you know, same open bracket with these players, and you can see the difference in skill and how much better that these pros are than these AM teams. They're just making quick work of them. All right, well, game number one is going to go in favor of status quo. They are going to win that 50 to 21. Flame Sword with the killing frenzy. Uh, he looked pretty good. He was playing extremely well. So that's going to be a positive 12 for him. Taking a look at the rest of the stats. Snake bite positive 7. Royal 2 and enabled the main slayers on the bottom of the list. Get a load of that. <laughs> All right, well, that's going to do it for game number one. Coming up next, uh, we will have game number two, and it will be an objective, so stay tuned.